This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations, everybody. This might be the last video we ever record in my parents' old house. Yeah. So, fun times. Anyhow, a lot of stuff happened last time. We right. realized that Ernest Amato had actually won the award for the 2009 Butt of the Year. Because <laughs> he's like, oh, I know, I'll buy the haunted house for a million so dollars just so you can't, you can't investigate the there. crime scene. Which Can you is... tell your computer screen toward me? Because I can't. Yeah. Thank did that you. actually make a difference? Because for yes. me, that literally did not change anything. That makes a difference for me. It's okay. like when with the 3DS where you're like, ugh, when you look at it from the fair, side. Fair enough. But for, it doesn't make sense that he was just able to buy the haunted house and be like oh you could investigate it now it's like if you i don't think the amusement you, park's doing if well. you kill somebody on your private property it's not like well police you can't investigate this is my property it doesn't matter you, you still killed somebody we still mm. think you killed somebody we get to investigate. maybe he's like part of the mafia who knows he, he leads the yakuza maybe march 13th 4 27 p.m get water lane main gate okay if i can't get permission to investigate the crime scene then the truth will be lost Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing spacing out? Have you forgotten? There's only one thing you should do at a time like this. And what is that? When the people are in a bind, the hero of justice appears to save the day. Look, you just leave it to me. For I am Kay Faraday, the legend, the second of the great Yadagarasu. Mm-hmm. That's nice. <laughs> but I thought you were a thief, not a hero. The Yadagarasu's noble, and the thief is always a thief of justice! That's... of course! If we have enough information, I can recreate the inside of the haunted house with this! Plus, if we then factor in everyone's testimony... You can recreate exactly what happened when I dropped off the ransom money. We may be able to figure out some new information for this. It's worth a try. Agent Lane? Ah, so you want to use your little toy? Be my guest. Okay, hang on! You're all about to witness the true power of a real modern-day Robin Hood! Detective Gumshoe, is there a copy of the Haunted House's blueprint on the police's reference documents? Yes, sir! We got it just in case we needed it for the kidnapping case! Alright! I'll input the Haunted House data then! W what is this? Where are we? It's... it's like we're inside the Haunted House! Even if we can't inspect the real location itself, the path to the truth slumbers here. If I can successfully navigate my way using logic, I'll ultimately arrive at the I truth. love how he is moving still, though, while he's thinking this. So they're like, Edgeworth, are you okay? He's like, shaking yes. his finger at himself. <laughs> Essentially. Hey, Steam. No. No. I don't need anything with Steam. Sorry. It's just like, oh, whoops, you're <laughs> streaming this. You're like, no! It's like, oh, hey, you have internet at last. Here is all this stuff that needs to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now then, I believe I'm ready to investigate the crime scene. Okay, what should I recreate first? You haven't figured it out yet? <laughs> maybe I have and maybe I haven't, but I'm gonna make, uh, to make up all... I'm gonna make you do all the hard work. Very well. I'd like to inspect the moment in which I was ambushed by my abductor. The two of them were definitely in this place at that time. If I can verify that, it may provide me with a new lead. I had just come out into the hallway after leaving the money inside the dining room. At that time, I saw a badger slumped over on the floor at the end of the hall. Uh, what was the badger doing all the way down there? I also thought it strange. However, I thought that maybe it was simply a mannequin that was set there for atmosphere. Do you know which badger it was? No, it was too dark to tell. All I saw was its silhouette. Hmm, in that case, I guess I'll just program a badger silhouette in for now. <laughs> okay, programming complete. <laughs> Edgeworth has a force ghost now. Yeah. But with a green but with tinge a green instead tint, of a blue, not a blue one. It's probably the best. Yeah, that looks good. Do you like this overall gimmick of, like, recreating Yeah, stuff? I think it's really cool. I think there are so- like, if we had this gimmick, though, before, there would have been so many times we could have just been like- That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense, we can figure this out. Like, if they had- if we had that for all of Case 2 of the second game, <laughs> like, what- which I'm watching right now since yeah. we uploaded that, like, that would have been great. We could have had that for, like, Von Karma when we got tased that one time. Recreate the moment he tased us. I yeah, don't think it would work like that. Well, we could have done that for, um, 
what is it? The, uh, rise from the ashes? Yeah. That would have been so nice. Then I started walking towards the exit. It would have been nice for that. Yeah. And that's when you were struck from behind, right? Yes. But that's odd. The hallway is a dead end. Where did your assailant come from? There's only one location I can think of. Through a mirror. I believe my assailant was lying in wait here. The mirror is like up here. Yeah. It would make no sense for it to... What are you thinking, Mr. Edgeworth? That's a terrible hiding spot. It's literally out of bounds. He'd have to be a real ninja to get away from hiding there. Th that was not exactly the nuance I was trying to convey. Where could my assailant I have hidden himself? I don't think it's- I don't think house? it's on B, because if it was on B, it'd have to be like a Five Nights at Freddy's, like, Foxy's running toward you <laughs> type thing. We saw that happen, though! He didn't at the run, beginning. he just was he like, just stopped. Buh, 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 and then he gets hit on the head. Yeah, but that's literally the only place it could have come from. Fine. Take that. that doll I saw wasn't really a doll. It was, in fact, a costumed kidnapper. Oh, so we used the costume as the perfect camouflage to blend in with the rest of the house! Precisely. He waited until I had made the drop-off and was about to leave. Then, just as he saw me take a step toward the exit, he stood and launched his attack. I can think of no better hiding place than this. Hey, not bad! I'm beginning to think I should steal this attack for myself! Just don't use it to do anything criminal, okay? But it looks like a Teletubby. It oh does. my gosh, <laughs> demented Teletubby! It's coming for us. Well, Lance, wh what are you asking me for? As one of the kidnappers, I figured I should give you the chance to confess first. I was one of the kidnappers, but I don't know anything. I did come up to the haunted house, but I never set foot inside. I left Oliver in charge of picking up the ransom money. He didn't set foot inside. Is he telling the truth, or is this another lie? All right, then you're claiming that it was Mr. Deacon who assaulted me. Yes, I'm sure it was him. <laughs> okay, I'm putting the new info now. Mr. Deacon was the Bad Badger, right? Since the Bad Badger had a, has a gun attached to its right hand, I'll have to change it so the weapon's in his left hand. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Now to verify the facts of this recreation. Haunted house, begin investigation. Also, I love how the dude's just like, yeah, whatever. Which one? Uh, the guy counting his money. Can't remember oh, his name. Ernest. He's like, this doesn't, this is fine. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing, sir. This space that I'm standing in, it's like out of some crazy dream. Except that this isn't a dream. This is something, uh, case gadget. No, wait, this is exactly like a dream, sir! I've never been so impressed! It's a miracle! Someone sure is easily impressed. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it! Oh, so this is a product of your gadget? Now I wish I had one, too! Well, once this is over, I'll let you play with it for a bit if you want. You do that for me, pal? Thanks! Alright, let's wrap this case up already! It's times like these that I wonder if they understand the seriousness of the situation. Talk to Sheena. Okay. So, have you noticed anything worthwhile? I have no obligation to talk with you. Well, I'm fine with just little thief and solving this case. That toy. It's very well made. <laughs> That's because it's the heart of the noble thief, Yadagarasu. Okay, that may not be something you want to advertise to everyone. Hmm. Yo, Sheena! So what exactly is the source of this extra-dimensional-like space? I believe this is nothing more than a projection from that girl's toy. So it's all an illusion, right? Yes. Hey! Don't treat this like some sort of silly light show! That's kind of what it is, though. Thanks for letting us use, um, little feet. Lane Z says, reject not those who seek the truth. So keep in mind that I'm not doing it for you, I'm doing this for the truth. Don't worry, I understand. We may have different methods, but our wish is still the same. Kind of. It's a replica of myself. You were totally oblivious to what was behind you, huh? Yes, I suppose I am also to blame for what has happened to me. It was incredibly dark, which was all the more reason I should have been more alert. I vow to never be caught by surprise again. You didn't recreate the weapon. Well, I can't exactly recreate something I know nothing about. So tell me, what were you hit with? 
The attack came from behind, so I have no idea. I think it was an axe, wasn't it? No, from what we saw, it looked like a sword. Oh, whatever. Uh, but I doubt it was someone's bare hands. Um, okay, then what were you hit with? I was hit on the right side of my head, just above my temple. I have no idea what it was, though. Oh. <laughs> there was a bit of blood, but it wasn't anything serious. Ouch! Sounds painful! Why are you smirking like that when you say it? It's just your imagination! Now let's see! I wonder if there's anything in the hallway that could have been used as a weapon. I'm looking for something the culprit could have used to hit you with. It could have been... The pendant! No. The object the culprit used, could it not have been this? I don't really think that's it. Hmm. Oh, that's it, that's it. I wonder if there's anything in the hallway that could have been used. Yeah. It could have been the, like, the broken prop sword. I have it. There was indeed one such object laying here in the hallway. A prop sword. Are you talking about this thing here? Yes. Although we did find it at the kidnapper's hideout. Wait. Yes! It's possible that the culprit took it with him after using it on me. To leave no evidence behind, right? Correct. It may be worth a more thorough examination yet. Man, prop swords hurt if you get hit with them. <laughs> okay, so what test do you want to run on the sword? Let's do the stupid one first. We should first run a fingerprint analysis. But wasn't the person who attacked you wearing a costume? Somehow I don't think he left any prints on here for us. I suppose not. Curses! How could I have made such a rudimentary mistake? Let's run a luminol test. It's possible that some of my blood found its way onto this. Agent Lane, may I ask for your cooperation in this matter? <laughs> like I have a choice! Sheena, call the lab boys! Understood. Except for a dab on the left side, it would appear that the blade is spotless. So it must have been the left side of the prop sword that hit you then, right? Broken prop sword data updated. Okay, I'll update the recreation with this new piece of info. Is there another case after this one, or is this the last case of the game? This is case three out of five. Oh! <laughs> see, sometimes it's like there's four cases, but the fourth one's really short. I think Apollo is the last game that has four cases. Oh, the rest of them is like five and six? I think so. I won't, I won't rest until I've inspected every nook and cranny of this guy's face. <laughs> it's me. I have to say, it's rather embarrassing to see myself like this. Oh, so what were you thinking about at the time? I don't recall, but it, I would guess I was thinking about the kidnapping. Really? Because I don't think so at all. Your face practically screams, I'm about to be cocked over the head. <laughs> if I had known that, that at the time, do you think I would have let myself be hit? Yeah. You know, the Bad Badger's pretty bad looking when you see him up close. Well, what did you expect from a character named the Bad Badger? And those sunglasses! Wearing them in the dark makes him seem extra bad. Now I'm lost. Which meaning of bad does she really need? And in the next instant, this Badger will swing his left arm, completing the with, complete with the weapon in hand! Yes, to club me with the left side of the prop sword. Shall I recreate the moment of impact? I want to see the faint expression on your face. It's just fine the way it is. Hmm? Wait, maybe not. Is it just my imagination or is something not quite right? If he's gonna hit with the left side blade, would that work with the left hand? Or would it have to be in the right hand? Good call. Good Finally, I've found a clear contradiction of facts about this sword. Except for the bit on the left side, this prop sword is absolutely spotless. However, if the culprit had used his left hand, the blood would have been on the opposite side. Or he just held the sword backwards. Uh, it, like, <laughs> if you held it like Gaius from from Awakening, where he's like... Not backhanded. Oh. Not backhanded. Literally just, like, turn it around in your hand. That's all you would have to... I mean, then the hilt would get in the way of your hand, but it's still possible. Uh, yeah, it's possible. The opposite side? Huh? If the culprit held the sword in his left hand, then the sword's right side would hit. I see, but the blood was on the left side of his sword, right? Which means that he used his right hand to hit you. Exactly. To hit you? To That's kill you. I, <laughs> I think I said kill and hit, and I then that, I went kick. I, I've done that too, a lot. Kick you. This prop sword has a large handguard attached to the hilt. 
It would be impossible to hold it with two hands while wearing a costume with such big hands. Oh, that's true. Costume, big hands. Mm. <clears throat> Therefore, if it couldn't be the left hand or both hands, it must have been the right. I'll change the data to reflect a right-handed swing. Not yet, Kay. There's no sense in changing anything yet. If you change the parameters to the right hand, it'd only create a new contradiction. Changing the prop sword to be in the culprit's right hand would conflict with what? The side of the head that Edgeworth's hit? Or would it contradict with, um, why you would have to take... Wait, Bad Badger has a gun in his right hand? Yep. So that's why. It would create a conflict with this piece of evidence. My prosecutor's badge is on the other side and it would protect me. <laughs> Are you sure? They seem kind of unrelated to me. Yeah. I guess I really should just go ahead and fix the data to reflect a right-handed swing. Wait, Kay. I, I wasn't ready yet. I think it's the Badger Bible. Yep. Yep. Take that! Badger. The Bad Badger already holds a gun in his right hand, so he can't hold the sword in addition. Hey, that's right! Then what now? If it wasn't in his left or his right hand... It means that the one who struck me could not have been the Bad Badger. Are you paying attention, Lance? <laughs> Mr. Deacon could not have been the one who struck me. Which leaves only you as our primary suspect. <laughs> Fine! Who's me? I hit you! It appears that you lied to me yet again, but see how quickly they catch up to you, Lance. Wait, isn't Lance left-handed? Ah, uh, yes. But that's what makes this deception all the more interesting. He used his right hand to make it look like Mr. Deacon had been the one to strike me. For you see, firing a gun with one's non-dominant hand is difficult. But that level of dexterity isn't required to swing a prop sword. Ah! Kay, please input this new data. The one who hit me from behind was Lance. Or should I say the proto-badger? You got it. Here I go! By the way, I never thought in a million years that the blue badger would be so important to this dang series. <laughs> the blue badger is kind of annoying. Blue badger... And Steel Samurai. Steel Samurai's in it way too much. Oh, but Steel Samurai's kind of interesting, at least. The blue badger, it's like, oh, the police made this weird mascot. Who's in, like, two cases? That is really, really important. important. I'm like, why is this so important? Now we have a faithful recreation of the situation around the attack on me. All right! All you have to do is examine this new recreation and... <laughs> <laughs> and what exactly is so funny, Agent Lane? That amusing little gadget. It's your packs a punch, right, Sheena? Yes. It was all I could do to hold my laughter in. Hey! Don't make fun of little thief, you mean old werewolf! He and Mr. Edgeworth bring out the best in each other! You've had your little fun, but now it's my turn. I've sat quietly by listening. But the crude conclusions you two keep spewing don't whet this wolf's appetite. There's no guarantee that your toy will always show the real situation at any given time. All it displays is whatever information you put in there, right? Well, when you put it that way... Your suppositions are wrong. It's not your fault, so I'm gonna let you in on this. There's a trick to this haunted house. And what may that be exactly? A trick beyond what your tiny imaginations can produce. Sheena! Here you are. Now then, what you missed, girly, is written right here in this pamphlet, but you never turn to the next page. <laughs> the, s the Seven Wonders of the Haunted House, The Disappearing Badger. What's this? I'd say that someone around here is fond of theatrics. And as you can see, they set a doll down at the end of the hallway for that purpose. Basically, the blue badger you saw was just a stupid doll. Gatewaterland pamphlet data <laughs> updated. Edgeworth, that's why you look at all of the pages on the map, not just like, it's a map. Everything. It's like those Disney pamphlets that you get that like show you all the lands and like the food yeah. you can get. Yeah, you look those and are see. Good. Th those are really helpful, actually, but it's super nice because they categorize like, okay, do you seriously need to find a bathroom? Here you go, we got you. The only park I think I need one of those for anymore is Animal Kingdom. That's because we never go to Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom's also, not terrible. Also, great. Hollywood Studios, we'd have to do that now. Well, they've changed so much. They've changed it so much. Over but it's the past small. Years. Animal it Kingdom is, is huge. Animal Kingdom is bigger, but but it's like Animal Kingdom is bigger than like all the other parks combined. Technically, it? but that's because most of it's like for the animals. Right. Um. Ha yeah. How can this be? Guess that throws your whole theory about it being your attacker right out the window. <laughs> but, but that can't be right. 
Maybe the culprit hid the doll somewhere. And then he lay down and pretended it to be it instead. Instead? What am I saying? If the criminal couldn't even hide himself in the hallway, how could he hide a giant doll? Hmm. Maybe he sat right in front of it. Do you get it now? Thanks to your presuppositions. Your logic started off weak and led you to the completely wrong conclusion. Now get off your high horse! Mr. Edgeworth! Okay, I wonder if you could please input the new information for me. You don't know when to quit, do you? I can't quit, not until I can declare that I've found the truth. Agent Lane, for the additional information, you have my thanks. <laughs> there you go again! We'll see if I care! Okay, I'm updating the recreation now. I still have to talk to the, the duo, the trio over there. Yeah, the obnoxious. The obnoxious duo, and then Lauren. <laughs> Three badgers. This looks really weird. Look at how it changes from the blue badger into the proto badger all of a sudden. If the slumped over badger was just a doll, where was my attacker hiding? Well, that's what we're going to find out, right? So come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go! Yes, let's. This recreation can't be right, which means there must be a contradiction somewhere. Oh cool, now we can talk. You can lie all you want, but it will be all for naught, Lance. As soon as I expose the truth, you will be placed under arrest. <laughs> How can you do this? After all my dad has done for you! What your father has done for me is unrelated to the charges you face now. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, you sound kind of like a bully right now, Mr. Edgeworth. If I'm not serious about this, he will never understand the true gravity of his crimes. I will not allow him to remain a child forever. Haha, <laughs> now you sound like a dad! Hey, bud. <laughs> Miles, my boy, what is the meaning of all this? Do you plan to pay me back for all I've done to you if this is the, con with the conviction of my son? I have not forgotten my debt to you. However, your son's crimes are a separate matter. Further, I can't ignore the truth when it's right before me. You will regret this, I promise you that. No matter what the outcome, I never regret the choices I make. Nice. Miss Pops, by my hand, I will prove your innocence in the murder of Mr. Deacon. Therefore, please don't fret, it will soon be over. They are standing way too close together. He's just like, <laughs> imagine if you were right up This in way, my dear. <laughs> imagine if you were right up in her face, just like, You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little strange. Hmm? Do you not trust me? I, um, well, that is... Your face is all beat red, Miss Pops. No, I, I can't. I have plans. Molly, don't tell me that you like that guy more than me. That's... Oh, why am I so pathetic? I'm so easily swayed by even a single glance. I'm... I'm... Um, what exactly is she going on about? I think you have another guilty person on your hands, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, she has a crush all, on Edgeworth. All the girls Who doesn't have Edgeworth? a crush on Edgeworth? He's cool, but he's kind of obnoxious sometimes. <laughs> when you take a look around, it almost feels like more like a house of mirrors. Indeed. Who has ever heard of this many mirrors inside a haunted house before? Well, at least we know that this is the real crime scene thanks to the mirror shards. I bet you one of those mirrors is a fake, and then you can jump through. <laughs> hey, wait! These shards, there's something different about them. Oh? The ones we found earlier are thicker than the shards from these mirrors on the wall. And look, there's some sort of design on the back, too. The pieces from that costume are certainly different from the other mirrors. What does this mean? Could it be that our pieces are not pieces of these mirrors? Pieces of a set of armor are in a pile here. But you think they almost always have sets of armor inside haunted houses? I suppose this sort of interior design is meant to bring out a sense of abnormality. Why do all of your explanations have to be so hard to understand, Mr. Edgeworth? Now try explaining it again, but this time, so that even a thief like me can get it? That may prove to be a most difficult task. This is where the Proto Badger shows up in our recreation. Yes. Now the question is, where did he come from? There's a little weirdness in the wall. See how the wall stops? <laughs> yeah. Like you could open it up. Yeah, but there's no place to hide in our current model. 
There must be an inconsistency somewhere. Oh, hey. Oh, you could just... Oh, look! Yeah? Okay, how is, um, Little Thief? Totally fine in recreating the crime scene. All that's left is more info. But, you know, I can't believe I'm replicating a haunted house. And that we're talking about the fate of a million dollars. Pretty exciting stuff. I can't say I understand what is so exciting about recreating a crime scene. In any case, I believe that it is very probable that this murder occurred at this place. And if I can prove that, then we will finally arrive at the truth. Yeah! So what are you waiting for? Let's get investigating. I can't remember if there are any testimonies at, like, at this point. I don't think there are. I think it's just... We gotta figure out that wall. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. This blue badger is just a doll for use in the haunted house. I bet the one who killed the blue badger was the bad badger, right? According to the blue badger bible, it says that they are each other's worst enemy. All because one's ally- All because one's an ally in justice and the other's a vile criminal with a gun? Perhaps they were just destined to battle each other. Much like the Steel Samurai and the Evil Magistrate. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which... He understands. Yeah, Edra's a fan of the show. Mm -hmm. Alright, um... Oh, oh let's look at the fan. pamphlet. It's pamphlet... The Why is it every haunted house badger. has, like, dolls? In them? Like, creepy dolls. dolls are inherently kind of creepy. I kind of agree with you, but I wouldn't have thought dolls were creepy as a child. Okay, well, check no. the wall. Not that wall. When you take a look around, it almost looks like a house oh. of mirrors. That's the same thing. Okay, interesting. That. See how it looks weird? It definitely does look weird, but unfortunately we can't examine it. Let's suspect the... the... Yeah, no, maybe. Uh, That's the only thing to inspect, so it's probably this. Deduce. I'd love to deduce. Um, oh, Is let's it look literally... the Bible. The Bible? Yeah. I, I love looking think... at the Bible. No, oh, that is the blue badger, you're right. His straps are on the wrong way, though. Oh, I didn't even notice. Eureka! Eureka! Hold on a second here. There's something wrong with this blue badger. Huh? Like what? The way the belt is on him is the opposite way of how it should be. Did you make a mistake? That can't be! I inputted the image data exactly as it is in the pamphlet. So then why is the blue badger dressed up in reverse? Because it's a fake badger. It's a fake psycho. Let's use psycho. logic. Du, 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 oh, well, we only have two, so it's probably du, du, these two. Du, du, du. Kay, do you remember what you said earlier? What I said earlier about what? About how this building might as well have been a house of mirrors. A house of mirrors? Oh, that would explain the reversed or mirror image. Yes, this blue badger might be nothing more than the reflected image of a real one. Then, was the blue badger you saw just a reflection? When I looked down this hall, I thought it was perfectly straight. However, if there was a mirror... <gasps> then that would actually form an L shape, right? Precisely. I was deceived. The hallway was almost pitch black. And there was a beam in the way that obstructed my view of the other hallway. Wait, but why build the place like that? Sounds pretty pointless to me. Okay, this house is just another attraction at an amusement park. They created a mirror wall for a very specific purpose, one I can point out to you. This was the reason they built a mirror wall. They built it because... <laughs> because of the car. No! I don't get it. What's the connection between this and the mirror wall? It's up to you to deduce if there is a connection or not. Wait, that's your job! Grr, I should have figured I couldn't get away with that one. Alright, this house is one of the attractions here at the park. It should be pretty easy to reason why they placed a mirror wall in here. Is it because of the pamphlet? <laughs> yep. As it's written in the pamphlet, the main draw of this attraction is the, is the mystery of the disappearing badger. You mean they built the mirror for that trick alone? But you said you saw the badger, so it was definitely still there! That was true at the time, however. Doing this allows someone to make the blue badger disappear in a flash. Move the mirror wall, move the blue badger, dim the lamps. Um... Well, it was pitch black. But, um... 
How can you move the mirror wall? What? Well, it looks like the blue badger can disappear, so that makes sense. Dimming the lamps, I don't know. Um, we've got... All they would have to do is dim the lamps. So, that's how it's done! If it was completely dark in here... Then you wouldn't be able to see the badger anymore. Yeah! Wait, hold on! That's completely pointless! You wouldn't be able to see anything at all, not even where you were going! Hmm... Is that necessarily a bad thing? Well, it is if it negates the point of the attraction. I better rethink this. All they would have to do is move the blue badger. But do you think someone really could do that? Well, it's a rather expensive prop, so it perhaps it isn't possible. Um, doesn't that kind of ruin the whole point to having a mirror in the first place? I suppose it does. Mr. Edgeworth, come on, you can do better than that. All right, once more with feeling. Once more with feeling. To remove a reflected image, simply move the mirror. First, the mirror was constructed so that it could be moved. Then beyond where the mirror was, an empty hallway had to be created. Oh, so when they wanted people to see the blue badger, they would open the mirror. And when they wanted to hide it, they simply had to close it again. This explains why the other side of these fragments have a design on them. Ah, and then the pattern is the same as the ones on the other wall in the, in the hallway. Then, when the mirror is closed, it would blend in with the rest of the walls. This is the mirror trick that this haunted house employs. And this also proves the existence of a hiding place for the culprit. Huh? How so? Think about it, Kay. There was a place that was outside of my field of vision. Right. The culprit kept out of sight by hiding here. Well, I mean, let's do the stupid one, right? Um, I'm not sure how he kept out of sight by standing there. You mean to say that even a great thief like yourself couldn't hide here? Even the Yadagorasu has walls she can't overcome, you know? As I thought. I suppose it wasn't possible for the culprit either in that case. If you already knew that, then why did you bring it up in the first place? Yeah, I need to rethink this. Actually, wait, is there a special in Iowa for different stuff, I wonder? No, that's the same. Take that! Never mind. I had to try that. Take that! Yep. There was a very large blind spot, one I could not see beyond, and it was here. If my assailant hid on the other side of the movable mirror... Then you wouldn't be able to see him! He didn't even need to do anything to the Blue Badger doll! Exactly. All he had to do was wait for me on the other side of the mirror. Wait, hold on. I just thought of something. Yes? Well, shouldn't the mirror wall be broken right now in reality? Hmm, since we have a few shards of it, we can probably assume it is. Yes, it most definitely is broken. The question is, when was it broken? Since we found these inside the victim's costume, that would mean it was the victim that the victim was there when the mirror was broken. Wait, that sound. That sound I heard was most definitely the sound of a mirror breaking. Kay, I'd like you to input some new information. Ah! Don't scare me like that! Sorry, but I need you to recreate something for me. Sure, whatever you need. So what do you need anyway? If you could first recreate this hallway just before I entered the dining room. You got it! Man, imagine trying to walk into the park and then just see this. Seen all this, yeah. Now this, I believe this is pod racing. I mean, uh, how it was right before I entered <laughs> the dining room. Although, at the time, I thought it was but a single straight hallway. And then I went inside. It was around then that I heard the sound of a mirror shattering. You heard what? Then... Yes, I believe it was then that the mirror was broken. Okay, so then when you stopped outside in the hallway again... The mirror wall should no longer exist. Okay, please recreate that. Got it. <laughs> they're all just like, we're just here for the ride, man. Yeah, they're all just standing around. <laughs> Doing nothing. Wait, with the mirror gone, the culprit lost its hiding spot! So where did he go in his proto-badger suit, Mr. Edgeworth? Ha! Huh, that's easy enough. With the mirror gone, he simply hid himself in the branch hallway. Hmm, I think this about wraps it up. Looks 
like we finally solved everything! No, not yet. An even larger contradiction has now reared its head. Huh? Perhaps you did not notice, but this recreation contains a very troubling inconsistency. The inconsistency between what I saw and the recreation lies. Well, you only saw one thing in that hallway, so... Take that! Here! Huh? Are you sure that's the that contradicts what you saw? Wait, what? Ah, oh, well, that's something even I must look into a bit more. What? If even you're having a tough time with this, then it must be one tricksy trick. Hey, well, you didn't mean what you just said, did you? Yeah. Stop messing with me and just tell me the answer already. <laughs> Very well. I'm getting tired of slapping myself. Thank goodness, it would seem that she failed to notice my slip-up. The scene I saw before me and what's being presented in this recreation. There's something that was there on site that isn't in the recreation. It's in the hall? It's in the empty hall. Take that! Kay, take a good look at the end of the hall. Oh, there's no blue badger there! Exactly. The blue badger that I saw in reality is not there. This is the final point on this long chain of logic. The last remaining contradiction. Suit theme. This straight when you came out of the dining room. You saw a badger, right? And that is precisely where the final contradiction lies. Something that shouldn't exist was there before me. Who or what do you suppose it was? Oh, it was a uh, dead Mr. Demon Deacon. Mr. Demon? Demon, I dead believe, Mr. Demon! I believe this is the real identity of the final mystery badger. Oh. Now we're gonna see who the real culprit is. The, the bike. This is what I really saw at the scene of the crime. You mistook that for a badger? You disappoint me. We've worked so hard to get here. Don't get all weird on me now. Grr! The last contradiction. I think it's less fun to mess up as Edgeworth than it is if as Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh yeah, Phoenix is like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> the badger I saw was in actuality the dead victim's body. <laughs> What? I like his weird face. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> Agent Lane, the entirety of my complete logic is my final decisive piece of evidence. The murder happened in the hallway of the haunted house at the time of the drop-off. And you can consider the moment I heard the mirror breaking to be the real time of death for Mr. Deacon. No! Maybe it was due to their fighting, or perhaps it was the life-shattering bullet. But no matter what the cause was, the hallway mirror wall was broken. <laughs> Ha! You were in the house at the time, right? Are you telling me that you missed the sound of a gunshot? Objection! There were a variety of sound effects playing at the time. All for theatrics, I assume. The gunshot must have blended right in. The yeah! You're still stupid. <laughs> now then, I'd like you to recall something for me. Who was it that was with the victim at the haunted house? <laughs> Who was the one who had the opportunity to rob the victim of his gun and use it on him? <laughs> it was you, Lance Amano. I'm sorry. It's not like I had a choice. Oliver turned on me all of a sudden. He snapped and turned violent right after I hung up with you! He shoved me to the ground and straddled me! I fought back as hard as I could, grabbed his gun, and... I shot him! The bolt must have went through his body and shattered the mirror. If I hadn't taken his gun and shot him first, I would have been the one you found! He's a hardened criminal! He escaped from jail! See? That's justified self-defense! My boy was only trying to protect himself. Well, so was Lauren, according to you, but he's also a wrestler. She's terrible. She's terrible. She's a woman. <laughs> She's a woman. They're terrible. Uh, uh. That remains to be seen, and will have to be resolved in court. Agent Lane, I leave the rest to you. <laughs> As if you were the one in charge around here. Guys, arrest these two and get them out of my sight. But wait, I had nothing to do with the murder. The only person you should be arresting is Lance! Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you're not slipping away that easily, Mr. Ernest Amano. You tampered with the evidence so that you could cover for your son. What a great dad you are, willing to risk it all! 
<laughs> Truly touching. <laughs> By the way, do you know why I'm really here? And how could I possibly know the answer to such an asinine question? You wound me. I came all this way from across the sea just to see you, you know. You came to see me? Why? What's that supposed to mean? I have a few things to ask you, Mr. Amano, about a case from ten years ago. A case from ten years ago? How old would everybody be ten years ago? Uh, I just would be like... Fifteen? Something like that. Which were his edgy years in high school, there was some crazy <laughs> tech case that went... Edgeworth the Edgy. No, Edgeworth the Edgy? He already had DL6. Did he have to go for one other one in high school? No, no, I'm saying he's in his edgy phase at, oh. like, the Von Karmas in Germany, <laughs> and then this crazy case goes on. The Von Karmas don't live in Germany. Francisca just prosecuted in Germany. Oh, where do they live? Do they live in Japan California, too? Yeah. Oh. How would that... But, oh. And Manfred worked in Japan California. I, I mean, I kind of... That's a long did. commute. <laughs> yeah, that's true, I guess. <laughs> oh, what's the name that you use here for that case? Sheena! Oh, sorry, um, I was sleeping. Uh, it's known as the KG-8. Are you kidding me? How many are there going to be with the DL-6? Oh, you haven't the, even the, seen the half the of them. <laughs> <laughs> the 96-9. The 8675-309 case. It's known as the KG-8 incident. You, you sweat, what, boy. Bullets? The KG-8 incident? Oh, so you remember it. Good. Then you'll recall that the trigger in that case was the Amano Group scandal. Ugh. Specifically, the charge of an internal smuggling ring. Smuggling. There's that word again. At the time, the person that was arrested as the ring leader was Mr. Amano's very own secretary, Mr. Colin Devore. Oh. Oh, father. Even though you pushed the crime onto your then secretary, Mr. Devore, I always suspected that you were involved with the smuggling ring, Mr. Amano. Mr. Devore was arrested in place of you, which is why he, when he broke out, he hit, you hit him from the police, right? You hit him in exchange for his silence on your little dirty secret. No, 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 no. Uh, please calm down. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. I'll give you two twenties if you don't do anything. <laughs> <It's> like two twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend to be ignorant all you want, and you'll need more than two twenties to bribe me. We're taking you down to the precinct anyway for a nice long chat. Cool. Rest that butt. Hold it. What's happening now? Oh yeah. You? What the? Who the heck was that? So freaks. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take him down to the precinct if you don't mind. And who the heck are you? Is this the? <laughs> He's back. I'm Jacques Portsman, and I'm the prosecutor in charge of this case. Oh, Jock! Thank goodness you're here. He must be paid. <laughs> he they paid him two twenties. <laughs> they paid him two twenties to to do this. Don't jerk me around. This is an Interpol case, so keep your paws off my suspect. Sorry, but I can't comply. I've got the backing of the prosecutor's office. See, in this country, we prosecutors work with the police to bring cases to court. Um, remind me, is this before this the is before airplane? Case, this is after the airplane case, before the case where Basketball Boy killed the uh, guy. Go to for the basketball, <laughs> basketball, we, we love, love basketball. basketball. <laughs> so if, if you could please cooperate with me here, that'd be great. Now, how about a handshake to seal the deal? Sorry, but I hate handshakes and <laughs> prosecutors. The whole lot of you. I just needed him to vigorously open his jacket 50 times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, arrest the two suspects. Also, where did Emma Sky go? Oh, she was just in it for like the one part. Is it? A brief cameo. And then she <laughs> left. Sir! Oh wait, that was Forensics Guy, not my bad. Sir! <laughs> that was not Forensics Guy. Oh, I almost forgot. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, is it? I'd like to thank you. Thank me. Yeah, for working so hard to fulfill my goal. Hey, is that any way to thank someone? And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You were so relentless with Lance that you forced Ernest to tamper with the evidence. Thanks to that, I finally had a legitimate reason to arrest him. <laughs> 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 I like Lane now. <laughs> He's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, how does it feel to bite the hand that feeds you? The hand that feeds me? I'm not sure I follow. Heh, <laughs> it's no use pretending with me. You're the one, right? 
You're the corrupt prosecutor that's working for Mr. Amano in the smuggling ring, right? No, that would probably be Basketball Boy. <laughs> no, I would never do such a thing. <laughs> what the heck? Our intel's never wrong. In your prosecutor's office, there's definitely someone working with the ring. What if it was Winston Payne? Winston Payne? No one would ever suspect an incompetent buffoon like me! <laughs> yeah, he's like in his 50s and 60s, like, I've got the comb over! That hides all my dirty secrets! <laughs> and we have our episode title. <laughs> in your prosecutor's office, there's someone definitely working in the ring. Ah, uh, so Agent Lane suspected my relation to Mr. Amano. That makes sense. That must be the real reason behind his antagonistic attitude. On top of that, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? Yeah, well... <laughs> there were non-stop rumors flying around about forged evidence of that guy. You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors, too, are you? Not anymore. <laughs> the courtroom is a place where the truth is revealed. <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not only you. The whole lot of you can't be trusted. A prosecutor who never lost in 40 years? Every defendant must be found guilty? Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? It would seem that this disdain extends beyond just me. Prosecutors, the courts, why is this man so angry with us all? It's like the Joe, where the Joe's like, I'm angry at everybody. Until except I get, you, Mia. Until I, <laughs> except you, Mia. Until I get my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Rest assured, the next time we meet, I won't be so forgiving. What do you mean? You, you, almost, like, really... you almost arrested Meekins. You almost arrested Meekins. Almost arrested uh, us. Us. Kind of. Almost arrested Old Bag. No, they didn't arrest Old Bag. They were like, yeah, she's an old hag. It's fine. She's fine. <laughs> so don't you forget it. Thanks, Sheena, for the dual point. <laughs> Please wait. Agent Sheena, why does Agent Lane hate all prosecutors so? Lang is the head of the long-honored House of the Lang and Zhengfa. The heads of all police-related divisions in that country were of Lang blood. Were? What do you mean by that? Aren't they still? They were revered. That was long ago. They don't hold that sort of sway anymore. And it was all because of the courts. How can that be? A prosecutor once withheld and tampered with the evidence one of the Lang detectives found. Might have been us. <laughs> we did that a couple times. <laughs> the evidence's purity was tarnished and cost the Lang family its honor and trust. But not all prosecutors are like that. Even so, Lang will never respect the court again. Or any prosecutor. So Agent Lane is a man who hates all courts and is unwilling to forgive prosecutors. Sounds like he and a De uh, Phoenix Wright would get along great. Yep. <laughs> man, what a piece of work that guy is. Come on, Jim. We'd better catch up. Oh, it's Jim! Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> we still gotta deliver that thing to the old man, after all. And play some basketball. You up for a pickup game? <laughs> pickup game slam dunk in the hallway! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hates him. Everyone hates him! <laughs> Winston Payne's like, what is that infernal no racket? racket? No, that would be more Edgeworth. What is that? What is that infernal racket? Yeah, so it's a <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, I believe it's time we wrapped up and headed home ourselves. Yeah! Are you going home too, Mr. Edgeworth? No. I've done nothing but be entangled in one mess after another since my return. If it's alright with you, can you drop me off at my office? At four in the morning. No problem, sir! Um, excuse me. Yes? Uh, what is it? Um, I... that is... thank you very much! Aw, oh, it's okay. No need to thank me, pal. Just doing my job as a detective. I guess I was fooled pretty badly by Lance. Still have the ring pop up. <gasps> oh, cruel fate! What's a woman to do when she's been hurt by the one she loves?! I think I never realized my father was right there. I never said anything to him. I knew it! I'm... I'm a failure! Aw, there she goes again talking to herself. Miss Pops, I wonder if you know why your father participated in the kidnapping? No, I have no idea. Your father died while he was trying to stop Lance. Which means that from the beginning he had no interest in the staged self-abduction. Wait, then why did he... I believe it was because of your presence, Miss Pops. Me? Lance realized that the two of you were related. 
Which is why he used you as a hostage to coerce Mr. Devore into cooperating. Father! As a felon, he could not tell you of his real relation to you. However, as the Amano family butler, at the very least, he was able to watch over you. It was all he could do, but that was the shape of his overflowing love for you. Hmm? Go on, speak your mind. I, 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 um, that is, uh, th thank you very much. I just don't need to present no specific piece of evidence at the end like Phoenix Wright yeah. does. He yeah, just knows. He just has logic. <laughs> I've never heard of that. You're welcome, although there is no need to thank me. so much older than you! He's like five years older. You're, we're both legal, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like you've completely stolen her away, Mr. Edgeware. Way to go, sir! Your technique is way beyond the level of a great thief! What are you going on about now? Wow. Your deducing skills may be sound, but you have no street smarts. That's Mr. Edgeware for you. Yeah. I mean, he still hasn't figured out who I am at all. What, is she related? Is it like, oh, Edgeworth has a long-lost sister? Um, that would be weird, Maybe. No. It could be that, I don't know. She doesn't look familiar, though, at all. She hasn't appeared. Any previous she hasn't appeared in any previous cases. No, but, I don't know, is it something like, man, remember I was that girl that you helped in your first case, and we played checkers and I won and beat you, and then ever since then, <laughs> like, I, you've always cornered the piece, the blue pieces in the side. That was chess. That was chess, sorry. I play checkers, he plays chess. <laughs> you haven't remembered in all this time, I guess I'm just gonna have to say it. This isn't the first time we've met, you know? What do you mean, pal? Mr. Edgeworth, how do you know this girl? Hmm. Looks like you've totally forgotten me too, Gummy. Gummy? What's in here? Here! Maybe this will jog your memories. I promised I'd return this to you one day, remember? That's... A cravat? That single piece of cloth took me back far into my past. To that fateful day seven years ago. It's always seven years when I first met the then child K. Seven years. And Detective Gumshoe. Oh, they met. Cool. And then they met. And then we don't the, get the to The end. And then we never get to see. A what? brand new episode has been added. Like the next time we Turnabout meet. Reminiscence. Oh my reminiscence. So remember how Trials and Tribulations introduced case four where mm -hmm. it was like the flashback case? Yep. There's another one of these. However, the difference is I actually really like this one. That's probably my favorite case in this game. Oh, okay. It's, it's good. I mean, it sounds cool. I think you'll have a blast. There's at least one character that I know you're going to have a, a fun time A fun racing. time? Cool. I think you're going to be excited. Here's Everyone thing. should be excited. That thing. case is pretty good. I don't know when. Then Who's this weirdo? Is that Phoenix Wright? <laughs> There's a guy that has his elbow like... <laughs> I don't know. Was that one of the five main silhouettes on the that bottom one of the of screen? The five right? main silhouettes. Oh, it could be Gumshoe. It could be Gumshoe. Look be forward to that though. next time. That's gonna be a great case. Thanks yeah. for watching, everybody. Tune in next time for that. That's gonna be fun. Also, sound quality might be a bit different because I think we'll be recording in my condo now. Yeah. Because I and it won't be I for rent like a month. teen real estate. Um, it won't be a month for them. They'll get it uploaded in just a few days. Yeah, but it'll be so long for me. I want to record. I want to, too. We'll figure something. <laughs> Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.